some of the explicit anti-Semitic and, and Nietzsche um, disavowed him um, in, in part because of his anti-Semitism uh, or, or because of his anti-Semitism in combination with his German nationalism. Uh, Nietzsche was against uh, the idea that any one people is inherently superior, right? Can't be a uh, moral or cultural relativist and also believe that uh, one group of people is inherently, uh, by God-given right or biologically or any other way, superior to another. Uh, so we, I, I think... The way that Nietzsche talks about the Jews puts us on edge. We are hyper uh, sensitive to anti Semitism, uh, to all forms of racism. Um, but I think it's useful to keep in mind that in the 19th century, although there was um, uh, you know, extreme and violent and, and um, you know, as horrific anti Semitism then as there was uh, in the 20th century or today that also uh, the idea of race in general was um, you know, not that we by any means have a strong grasp on what we mean when we talk about race. We, we don't. Um, but, uh, you know, back then there was a uh, similarly but differently confused idea about race. Um, and so when Nietzsche talks about uh, the Jews, he's, he's including them as a race of people, but, um, you know, in the same way that you would talk about the, the Hottentots or um, the Gauls or uh, the, the Italians, um, right? There, it, it wasn't quite, um, you know, especially in the context of the United States where we think of race as being um, black and white primarily. Um, that that whole framework doesn't apply to Nietzsche. So um, he's talking about the, the Jews as a race of people, and there is without question um, some some really uh, horrific anti-Semitic tropes and uh, and racism in the way that Nietzsche talks about the Jews. Um, however, another thing to keep in mind um, when Nietzsche is talking about the Jews is uh, who he thinks the Jews are and who he thinks uh, the inheritors um, and stewards of uh, Jewish morality are. And those are the Christians. Uh, so I think as you're reading, whenever you are hearing Nietzsche talking about um, the Jews, you should always uh, at least have it as a question uh, that he might be uh, also talking about Christians. Um, after all, Jesus was a Jew. Uh, after all, the uh, Christian morality uh, that Nietzsche is interested in um, critiquing, overcoming, um, is originally uh, a Jewish morality. And we see this very clearly in the way that Nietzsche describes uh, Jewish morality, uh, Christian morality, what he will call uh, slave morality. Right? And this is uh, Nietzsche participating in uh, a discourse uh, that begins roughly with an uh, earlier German philosopher, um, Hegel, the beginning of the 19th century, um, about the relationship of master to slave uh, and um, the way that dynamic plays out. Uh, so what Nietzsche describes is um, a revolt against this noble morality. Uh, which is, in essence, a slave revolt, a revolt against uh, the masters, the nobles. And Nietzsche describes this as a reversal in morality, uh, where he says, 
um, all of the values of the mobility get turned on their head. So, uh, whereas in noble morality, um, strength and, uh, and self-love and self-interest uh, are values, in uh, the opposite in slave morality, uh, it is weakness, meekness, uh, and selflessness that become values. Uh, and so these values, although Nietzsche identifies them with the Jews, uh, are really uh, Christian values. Right? What he's really discussing are is Christian morality. Um, and so, how does this rebellion take place? Uh, it happens as a result of um, what Nietzsche calls resentiment, uh, which is just the French word for resentment um, and reaction. Uh, so he'll say, right, uh, the noble class, the uh, master class, the ruling class has subjugated all these people and imposed their own idea of good on these people. And uh, the consequence of this is that among those who have been subjugated, who have been, if not literally enslaved, uh, then you know, put to work in the service of this ruler class, among those people, uh, a very deep resentment grows, right? resentment against the master. Um, not only because um, they are materially being uh, oppressed, uh, but also because they are psychologically being oppressed. Right? They're told that their values uh, are not good, uh, that they need to assimilate to the values of uh, the master. I mean, we we uh, can certainly draw um, lots of parallels to our situation in the United States with race, right? The idea that, um, you know, uh, black culture is, uh, is inferior to white culture, right? That form of racism uh, is the imposition of uh, a, a quote-unquote noble meaning uh, a noble ideal, meaning an ideal that is authorized by power, uh, and um, imposing that on a people who are subjugated by that power. Uh, so, right, in this, in the United States, there is the material uh, oppression of um, the peoples that don't belong to that ruling class, that noble class, the class of power, uh, the material oppression, but then there's also the psychological and cultural oppression, uh, the, the erasure of, uh, of, of black culture, of black accomplishments, and the rejection of, um, of black values, uh, right? So, I mean, I'm using black and white, being the most obvious, but uh, this this dynamic applies to any kind of power relationship where one group holds power over another group right, and uh, forces their idea of uh, the good, the useful, the true onto another. Um, and so Nietzsche thinks that this is the, dyna the dynamic that goes back to, um, you know, uh, early history when um, the Jews were uh, enslaved in, in Egypt, right? um, when they were uh, materially and culturally subjugated in that way. And that uh, 
the revolution in morality, what he refers to as a revaluation of all 